As we've seen, arrays can be powerful tools to organize data. However, they need some special friends to realize their full potential. These friends are loops. And of all the loops, the for loop is an array's very best friend. Now let's see why. Let's make a new playground with the array we used earlier. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to go back over here to playground, pop up on the rectangle once, and pop into there. Again, I like to put import foundation even if I don't need it. Because eventually you will. Has been my experience. Now we're going to put in the same we had before, which is var a equals, and we're just going to do the basic one I had originally, which is 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. If you want to be really fancy about it, and like I said, this is better communication, and it does make the compiler move a little faster, is you can do int like that and declare this as an integer. That's either way works, but that's the better formed version of an array. Now I'm going to do a simple for loop. So a for loop iterates over a range or over a collection. To iterate over a range, you have a value, a range, and a code block. So you start with four, and then you put in a variable. Literally, it's a constant. It acts like a constant, but it's constantly changing as you iterate it. And we're going to call that one number. Okay. And so that'll be the value that will iterate, is a better way of putting it. And then you put in, and then you put a range. And the way you do a range is do zero dot, 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 and so, so from 0 to the end of the range, which is 10. So that would be what's called a range. There's a different version of range we'll show you in a little bit, but that'll be the first one to do. And then for number in, 0 to 110, and then you put curly braces. And inside the curly braces, you're going to put a code block of whatever you're going to do with number. We're going to be very simple here, and we're going to print the number. And we can go ahead and run that code. By tapping the run my code button and then I'll tap the console button so that we can open this up and we get essentially what we would expect is that it iterates it finds number is equal to zero and then it prints that and then number is equal to one and it prints that and number is equal to two and it prints that so on and so forth and so it does that as you can see 11 times you can also by the way if you hit the add viewer button in playgrounds you'll see those values and if you tap on that square here change it to list and that's another way of looking at all those values that are going to be changing if you want to do it that way just as a quick way of checking these numbers without having to go through all the other stuff we have here so I'm gonna close that up though so I'm gonna remove viewer now the collection like the array replaces the range with a collection so I'm gonna do something like this for number in a and notice I reused number here uh, number is going to stay within the scope of the four so you can reuse it uh, many times but in this case I've now changed the range to the array and now what it's going to do is going to iterate over the elements of the array okay and now I can do the same thing I just did into a print number and if I run that code you see what happens on the bottom here is that I get 1 6 15 20 to 15 6 and 1 so it's working pretty good here one use of this is finding the sum of the elements of the array so I'm going to add a couple more pieces here I'm going to start by adding another variable let's call it sum then inside the array I'm going to take sum and I'm going to add the value of number to it. And you can use that with plus equals. It's the same as sum equals sum plus number, or you can do sum plus equals number does the exact same thing. And I'm going to use the sum plus equals number. So I'm going to increment sum by number. And now I'm going to put in here the number and the sum. Now if I run my code this time, I get two lines of data. And you can see here what we've got is I've got the number first, and then I've got a set of values that adds up the value. And we get 64, which is the total of all the values within the array. Manipulating arrays in for loops is also very common. 
For example, I'm going to make a new array sum from my sums. So let's do put that under here. We're going to do var sums. And I'm going to declare this again as an integer array. And I'm going to make it an empty array. And you make an empty array by just having empty brackets like that. Now, underneath where I have sum, I'm going to add sums dot append. And then here in the append, I'm going to put the sum as a new element of the array. I'll hit return here. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put sums after that so we can see the whole array as we are running this code. And I'm going to now go ahead and run my code. And now I get the number, and then I get the sum, and then I get an array of all the sums that I have found. And you can see that uh, expanding out as we do this. Now I can even go one step further than this and add sum of sums. Okay, and I can now take the sums, and now I can put in sum of sums here, and I'll do the same thing this time with the sum. And I'm going to print that on the bottom here. Like that. I can go ahead and run my code. And I can see that the total there is 256. We have two arrays with indices that are related. One is the sum at that point of the other. Now we can process both arrays as usable data because they both have an index that matches each other. So let's say I can do something like this with four, which is another very common way of using it, is I make an index in, and then we'll do zero, dot, dot, and we use a different range here, and that's gonna be dot, dot, less than, which says it's gonna, as long as this value is zero, less to this next value, and the next value is gonna be a dot count. As we know, a dot count we can't go to because that'll get us into out of range. So it's one less than a count, and that is in range. So this is a common way of doing this, is to get the last element. So from zero to the last element here. And then we'll put space, and we'll go into here. And now I can print these. And I can do the index, a index and sums index okay now you're going to run that code and there on the bottom there you can see that I've actually got associated values here now let's do one more thing because I want to show you something important to remember about using these things with indexes. So let's go up here to just below the print sum of sums, sums, append, and I'm going to do sum of sums. So now I have two arrays that are not the same length. So if I run my code, I don't get any difference because I'm using A here. And because I'm using A, which is the shorter of these two arrays, my indexes are fine. If I change this here to sums and run now, you'll actually have another set of problems because you get an index out of range. It gets as far as you go. That's the thing about runtime errors. It'll run until it finds the problem you'll get that index out of range because sums is one larger than a. So be careful about that. Watch your ranges and indices when you're comparing arrays because that's a very common problem here. When you're working with models, this is what you'll be using and you'll be doing all kinds of calculations very much like the ones we've done right here. On the user interface of SwiftUI, you'll use something similar which we're going to look at next.